The prices went up. 350. And up. 450. And up. $900. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 things only 90s kids will understand. Respect the pouch. Respect it. For this list, we're looking at the things from the 1990s that those who grew up during the decade either remember or fully comprehend. If there's a distinctly 90s thing you're distinctly upset we forgot, remind us in the comments. Number 20. Moon Shoes Kids love bouncing up and down, as parents and mattresses everywhere can attest. I just gotta get moon boots! And while trampolines are arguably the most popular way for kids to leap in this way, there have been more portable attempts. Up and down like a kangaroo. Moon shoes. While moon shoes have existed in some form since as early as the 1950s, the 90s saw Nickelodeon improve the safety of this product by making them from plastic and using bungee springs. And while they may have been cheaper than trampolines, moon shoes often led to just as many injuries, usually to the ankles or knees. But that didn't stop us from hopping around our neighborhoods or trying for a fabled double bounce on a bed or trampoline. I promised I'd get all the leaves. Number 19. The pain when your CD got scratched. This one is still somewhat relevant today since some video games still use discs. But back in the 90s, discs were everywhere, particularly CDs for music. Oh, your CD's skipping. I'm gonna watch TV instead. And keeping them clean and free of scratches was a practiced art. If it did happen, skipping audio was the least of the issues it caused. We tried everything we could to repair them, from banana peels to toothpaste. Finding a replacement wasn't as easy back then, since who knew if the local record store still carried it? Plus, we only had so much allowance or summer job money to spend. Ah! My Liza Minnelli CDs are gone! Number 18. The taste of victory after opening a Capri Sun correctly. Juice boxes come in many shapes and sizes, but the most infamous is Capri Sun for one simple reason. The difficulty in putting the straw in. Capri Sun. These juice pouches have a small straw target set vertically near the top, along with a sharp straw meant to pierce it more easily. Unfortunately, opening them correctly proved as difficult for many of us as kids as solving a Rubik's Cube. Sorry, these Capri Suns are notoriously difficult to open. The straws always bent or you got the wrong angle. Some even tried going in from the bottom. No matter the method, we usually ended up spilling juice on ourselves. Why is this soaked? Did a Capri Sun explode back here? But when we got it just right, ooh, that just made Capri Sun taste like ambrosia. Number 17. The Cool S There are a surprising number of 90s experiences relating to writing we could have discussed instead, like losing the tip of your pushpoint pencil, no! or how to hone your skills with a light bright. But one thing we all did in school is draw that cool S. To draw the S, all you have to do is draw three vertical lines on top of three vertical lines, then connect them, and draw points at the top and bottom. It's a universal symbol that can be found the world over, and has been around for decades, even before the 90s. However, we'd argue that the symbol's popularity exploded in public consciousness during the 1990s. Number 16. The specific cheesiness of Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen movies. Abracadabra! <laughs> the Olsen twins may have spent most of their adult lives trying to forget their childhood careers, but we can't forget and we never will. Their movie starred the two sisters in what was seemingly some version of themselves, often with one of them being sporty and the other one being bookish. The Font Alexander. You know, a bridge built for the 1900 exhibition. It presents Paris at its grandest. <laughs> well. At least that's what it says in the book. They'd get kidnapped or trade places, or maybe they were amateur sleuths. Their parents were usually absent or unseen, and they were free to hang out with cute boys in exotic locales all over the world. I don't know when I'll see you again, Melanie. Well, when the video heads get famous, maybe you'll tour LA. The movies didn't make much sense, but that didn't stop us from watching them on repeat. <laughs> Number 15. Debating which deck design to choose for Windows 95 Solitaire Microsoft Windows was, and still is, one of the biggest operating systems out there. Windows 95 came equipped with several games everyone played to death, 
whether you were working in an office or a kid just learning how to play on the computer. And solitaire was usually the go-to due to how easy and fast-paced it is. Solitaire? Yeah, free cell. Or six on seven. I know, I saw that. So then why didn't you do it? I'm saving that, because I like it when the cards go. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> but what we took our time with was choosing which card backs to use. Are we feeling tropical with a beach design or elegant with the roses or vines? The castle evokes mystery. And who doesn't love a robot? These are the kind of decisions you need to make if you were going to play the game for just five minutes that became an hour. Hey, you know what I feel like doing now? Playing solitaire. Number 14, Beanie Babies Mania. These bean stuffed toys are actually still around. However, their popularity today pales in comparison to how omnipresent they were during the 90s. The biggest toy craze in history. They would just lunge and grab. Because the company that made them created deliberate scarcity by retiring certain animals, the resale value on them was gigantic and created a huge demand among adults and teens. There were people out there who were buying the beanies and this was their livelihood. But kids loved them too. They were everywhere. There were Beanie Baby magazines, they were arguably the first internet phenomenon. Goldie! We don't have Goldie! Yes! <laughs> they were in Happy Meals. And sure, as kids, we probably devalued them by playing with them, but we didn't know any better. Number 13, waiting for dial-up internet. Kids today have it so much easier when it comes to the internet. Back in our day, wow, we're becoming our parents, aren't we? Using the internet wasn't as simple as opening a browser. We had to wait for it every step of the way. We had to access it using a phone line, so we had to block off time when no one was using the phone in our houses. Then we had to listen to that screeching dial-up internet noise that's ingrained in all of our heads forever while connecting to America Online. <laughs> and loading websites made us wait too, since internet speeds moved as slow as a snail through molasses. Remember that the next time your internet is a little slow. Hurry up, I'm a busy man. Number 12, the subtle art of putting multiple VHSs in Blockbuster's Dropbox and the fear that they didn't get through. The whole VHS experience is something many kids these days don't get. They'll never know what it was like to rent a videotape from Blockbuster or how we had to be reminded to be kind rewind. We well, didn't rewind it, there's a $2 charge for not rewinding. <laughs> There's no signs here, this is an outrage. What George. You... But once we rewound those tapes, getting them back to the store was often more complicated than just holding down the rewind button on our players. Sure, you could go in the store and return the tapes, but who had the time? The Dropbox was right there. Cramming multiple tapes in at once was a puzzle in itself, since they were always getting stuck. And if they did get stuck, you'd get slapped with a late fee faster than you could say, bummer, dude. Number 11, raising Tamagotchis. During the 90s, digital pets were all the rage with kids. Don't forget your Giga Pet! Whoa, Doggies, Madonna's hungry! Don't upset your Giga Pet! And while Giga Pets also made a big splash, there's no beating the recognition of Tamagotchi. These virtual pets came in distinctive egg-shaped games. Oh, are you hungry? Oh, no, 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 by all means, feed it. Looking after these low-pixel creatures could feel like a full-time job way back when, as we took them from eggs into various new forms as they changed depending on how well we took care of them. It's, it's probably hungry. Whoever left it behind must not care too much. Can I have it? And there's a special level of panic when you realize you haven't fed yours and it's in danger of dying, which they did frequently. I'm so sorry, I was up all night, all my money got stolen, and I haven't had a clock since my Tamagotchi died. Uh-uh, this is strike three. Number 10, the adrenaline rush of hearing the Fresh Prince theme. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down, and I'd like to take a minute and just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Sitcoms are generally the most adult thing kids are exposed to on TV, and in the early 90s, every kid's favorite was definitely the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Will Smith was, and still is to many of us, the absolute epitome of cool, and his show had all the same charisma and hilarity that he delivered. Got in one little fight and my mom got scared. I said, you're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. I whistled for a cab and when it came near, the license plate said, fresh and a dice in the mirror. The anticipation that built in our young selves when the theme song began cannot properly be put into words. 
Speaking of words, we'll never get the show's lyrics out of our heads, no matter how much of our lives get flipped turned upside down. Looked at my kingdom, I was finally there to sit on my throne as the Prince of Bel Air. Number nine, when class wasn't class. Schools today have a lot more options when it comes to teaching and engaging kids. However, during the 90s, school could feel like a lot of the same day in and day out, at least for students. So we learned to savor those times when class didn't feel like class. A rainy day game of heads up, seven up during class, a game of parachute during PE, or the excitement we got when the teacher wheeled in a TV from the AV club. These were the moments we lived for when going to school. Because watching Bill Nye the Science Guy never felt like a chore. Bill, 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 Bill Nye the Science Guy. Number eight, needing the snazziest school supplies. The 90s were all about colors on everything. As kids, the louder and more colorful you could be, the cooler you were. Like, you know, whatever. Oh. All right. Oh, all right. Okay. This extended not only to bigger school items like backpacks, we're looking at you, Lisa Frank, but also the things we kept inside them. We wrote and drew using single pens that dispensed multiple colors, milky gel pens for dark paper, and even markers with mini stamps. We didn't just have Elmer's glue, we had it in gel form. And we had it all in Space Maker pencil boxes, complete with a transparent lid. Number seven, outdoor toys that had to be different. Whoever came up with some of the toys during the 90s was definitely thinking outside of the toy box. Most of them were new spins on familiar concepts. I just gotta get moon boots. Bicycle spoke decorations have been around since bikes were invented, but specifically made beads? That was a new one. And sure, everyone's played with a baseball, but how about one that's green and has a Velcro catcher's mitt? Or how about a skipping rope, but instead it's made of plastic and attached to one of your feet and counts your skips like a Fitbit? While there are plenty of weird toys today, we do miss these ones from our youth. Faster, faster, if you dare, skip your skip it everywhere! Three different electronic skip it, three different sounds, each sells separately, batteries not included. Number six, how to fold a paper fortune teller and how much worth you put into what it said. Okay, these things may have been around for practically a century, but they were very important to us during the 90s, dang it. It has the power to tell fortunes when given to a special girl on her half birthday. I'm sure. Can I have half a piece of cake now? Back in the day, we knew how to fold these things just right and knew exactly what to put in them to embarrass our friends. And despite knowing that our friends made them from paper, there was something mystical about the process of uncovering our fortune to the point where we're still embarrassed. Only now it's of how much stock we put into their outcomes. Oh my God, it says we like so-and-so? There's no way that's true, right? Plus it was better than MASH. Now there's a game to end friendships. Should we? Stop listening to you? Yes. Definitely. Free at last! Number five, the weird experimental foods and the struggle of getting your parents to get them for you. As we've seen already, the 90s were a time of experimentation with new concepts, and that extended to food as well. So fruity, they'll really turn your head. Whoa, I'll say. The decade saw bizarre sweets and snacks like Gushers, Lifesavers Holes, Butterfinger BBs, and Cheesecake Jello Cups. Strange drinks like Squeeze-Its, patently unhealthy cereals like Oreo O's, Reptar Crunch, Cookie Crisp, and Rice Krispies Treat Cereal, and soft drink experiments like Crystal Pepsi. Truly, it was a renaissance for the food industry. But did that make it any easier for us to convince our parents to buy a cereal that turned our tongues green? No, some people just don't understand art. Number four, how much a slap bracelet can hurt. Slap bracelets were a major fad during the 90s. They generally took the form of bendable metal bracelets with colorful plastic or soft coverings that could snap between being straight lines and conforming to the shape of your wrist. While they are still around today, they're not quite as mm, sturdy as they used to be. Snapping one onto yourself or someone else sure is fun and looks totally trendy, but it could seriously hurt if done hard enough. They are made of metal after all. We can see why some schools took to banning them, even if we would have taken the bruises to remain fashionable at the time. Number three, how no games will come close to how good 90s ones are. Colorful items would never have been made during the 90s without some equally colorful ideas, and some of the more bizarre and awesome ones were about board games. 90s games were as strange and extreme as everything else during the decade. How else do you explain games like Dream Phone, a game similar to Clue, except the objective was to find out who had a crush on you? It's Dan! Dan, my man! You're right, I really like you. Yes! <laughs> 
Dream Phone, the hot electronic talking phone game. It's for you! Or how about 13 Dead End Drive, where players fight over a major inheritance by trying to permanently get rid of the other players with traps. Wild, right? The fun's alive with 13 Dead End Drive! Number 2. The need for everything to be light up, color changing, especially purple, or inflatable. We've already touched a few times on how colorful and bright everything in the 90s was, but not only did everything have to be colorful, but it had to change colors too. Foods that changed colors were popular. Heck, sunscreen even sold by making it seem to kids like it would change their skin tone to weird shades. It totally didn't, much to our disappointment. It's new Coppertone Kids Color Block, the world's first disappearing purple sunblock. Purple, so you can't miss a spot. Rub it in, and the purple disappears. Everything had to be light up, too, from sneakers to yo-yos. If it wasn't illuminated, it was only half as cool. Plus, inflatable stuff, including chairs and toys, was very popular. If we surrounded ourselves with this stuff now, we'd probably look crazy. But in the 90s, we were just trying to stay hip. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. How insanely loud the THX logo is. Yeah, sure, we've got specialty theaters these days with lots of surround sound and tons of output, but back in the 90s, THX was the name in sound for movies. I got you the big screen TV, deluxe karaoke machine, and THX quality sound that would make George Lucas cream in his pants. And before many movies, the THX logo would appear, along with its signature resonant sound that's so freaking loud you can feel it in your chest. It's a sound and experience so memorable that if you hummed it in public, people would know exactly what you were referencing and they might cover their ears reflexively. Or because you're making a weird noise in public. But definitely one of the two. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.